Dan Lewis. He's president of the Outer Banks Restaurant Association, and he's owner of Craving Steak and Seafood here and the Tap Shack, where we're sitting out in front of right now um, in Duck, North Carolina. And uh, Dan, thanks for letting us talk with you. He's, as I said, he's president of the Outer Banks Restaurant Association, and we've got a few questions for him. Um, so one of the first ones, it's been a struggle, I think, you know, on the Outer Banks about outdoor seating. Every town seemed to have different requirements. A lot of restaurants had to, had to fight a little bit to get the ability to actually do full service outside. Uh, with COVID, some of the towns passed temporary relaxation of their rules where we even see tables set up in parking lots and customers seem to like it as a choice. I mean, all over the world, there's alfresco dining. Uh, how, do you, how do you see that? Uh, how has that worked during COVID? And do you see the restaurant association or the restaurants themselves pushing to make that more permanent? Uh, I would think that it's, it's going to be a trend that's going to be long lasting, uh, regardless of when, uh, you know, how long this uh, situation lasts or when a vaccine is on board. I think uh, there's a, certainly an appeal to outdoor dining. And I think uh, now that we've all been through this uh, pandemic, we're all distinctly aware of like, you know, spacing and maybe a little bit more hesitant about being in a crowded room with uh, a lot of unknown people from who knows where. All right, and it's kind of a secondary question there, uh, a little bit, the Tap Shack outdoor, beautiful setting, easy to social distance here. And I see you've got a stage over there. Uh, a lot of our regular performers down here ha have been talking on Facebook about, this is their primary source of income, yeah. is performing at these venues in the summer and they're losing that venue. Uh, I know not a lot of your members are, are entertainment oriented to the extent where they're indoors and crowded, but some restaurants do that flip at nine o'clock. What do you see with COVID and that, that type of entertainment? Uh, is it going to change permanently or do you think uh, restaurants will be able to figure out a way to have, obviously you can't social distance when you're dancing. Uh, and, and having those kind of entertainment venues. What do you see happening uh, in that arena going forward? I think a lot of that's going to depend on when the vaccine is available. I think that's going to change everyone's comfort level tremendously. You know, in the, in the short term, we're still here in phase two with some specific requirements for outdoor dining. I believe it's uh, uh, 12 people for every thousand square feet. Uh, um, you know, as, as we've seen with a lot of major entertainers, you know, switching to the two online uh, uh, programs during uh, this crisis. I think that's certainly as an option. And I think there's plenty of uh, outdoor venues here in the Outer Banks. And I think that's going to be, just continue to be an option where people that may have only had music inside before are going to more outdoor dining options or entertainment options. And I guess it goes back to my first question. Do you see sort of a combination of a push for allowing more restaurants to have outdoor dining on a permanent basis with outdoor entertainment? I, I would uh, think go so. With it? I would think so. It's a, and I'm probably opening Pandora's box to be too strong of an, of, a, of, a, of an analogy, but you know, I did make a request uh, some time ago to uh, all five municipalities, uh, plus the uh, uh, county board of commissioners for the unincorporated areas, to help restaurant the restaurant industry in terms of the outdoor dining uh, require, uh, restrictions and uh, food trucks, food carts, whatnot. And but most of the towns have actually eased uh, those restrictions. Well, perfect segue into my next question food trucks. You and I have talked about this before, uh, and I've seen restaurant owners seem to be a little split on it. I've seen some restaurant owners opposed to food trucks coming into their territory. I've seen other restaurant owners look at it as here's an extension of my brand. I can take my brand all the way down to Hatteras. But it's been tough to get food trucks approved on the Outer Banks. With COVID, it's been a perfect thing where people could go to a food truck, social distance, get their food to take away, and move on and the locations are mobile. We have plenty of parking lots around here that are never fully utilized. Uh, after COVID, do you see uh, another push maybe from the restaurant association or from the restaurant owners to get more relaxation on food trucks? We seem to be one of the only places that really restrict their, their presence. And it's understandable. I mean, I think, I think most restaurant owners are probably opposed to it because most of them don't have trucks. Um, and no restaurant owner would want somebody else's truck parked in front of their restaurant taking their business away. Uh, you know, the other factor we have to deal with here in the Outer Banks is, is that, uh, you know, we don't have the space at our, our beach accesses to put a food truck and create all of that, uh, you know, that, that log jam. So I can see where a lot of those restrictions have come into place. Uh, most of the towns actually have a restriction against mobile vending, not necessarily trucks per se. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we'll, we'll try to do a continued push. One of the Nags had did already have provisions. Manio did already have provisions. Uh, Nags had even extended those provisions a little bit, and three and two of the other towns extended provisions during this emergency uh, situation. Uh, and, and you mentioned earlier about the vaccine and things like that, and, and, and a lot of our behaviors are probably not going to change on the <clears throat> consumer side and on the restaurant owner side. But what do you what do you think is going to happen over the next two or you know next one or two years? Do you see some of the current things, wearing masks, all the health procedures the state put in under COVID-19, count on me, those sort of things. Is that going to continue? Do you think consumers are still going to be a little leery? Uh, so what do you think the post-COVID, as we maybe move into full opening in phase two, I guess it is? I don't know if I would use the word leery, but I think more aware would probably be a good, uh, a better term, both, both on the uh, the industry side, uh, all of our front of house employees being very much more aware. Uh, I mean, we're a very well regulated industry to begin with. Uh, it's even uh, more so now. Uh, and that, but now I think at least our consumer is a little bit more aware of uh, those things that we are already, already aware of and uh, are only strengthening. Uh, so I think a lot of those things will, will stick around in terms of the awareness. You know, are we going to be continuing to wear a mask in a restaurant two years down the road? Probably not. I think one of the things that's been a struggle for me personally uh, through this is, uh, you know, with building barriers between booths and the distancing is the fact that restaurants by their nature are, are social gatherings, which is why, you know, we were so hard hit right from the, right from the start. So I, I hope that we can find a good balance between uh, safety and that social value that restaurants provide. Okay.